Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite TV shows. One that I, in my opinion, believe that holds up till today. So I'm going to be talking about Kolchak, the Night Stalker. What a great time I've had with this show, even revisiting it. It started based on an unpublished novel at the time called The Kolchak Papers by Jeff Rice. It was made into a TV movie in 1972 uh, called The Night Stalker. It didn't take the Kolchak name until four episodes into the season when it went on hiatus. It came back with Kolchak, The Night Stalker. It did well, and they did another one in 1973, The Night Strangler. I can't say at the time I remember these. I'm, I was only born in 1971. It was hugely successful. The first one, I think, had a highest rating for a TV movie at the time. And one of the people won an award, I think Matheson. Eventually, they decided to do a TV show. And this lasted from 74 to 75, basically one season. And again, I don't think I'm um, going back and remembering those earrings. Although I wouldn't be surprised. There are some things that are just ingrained in me. The Rolling Stones, Kiss. And I'm sure there were people watching the show in my house. It was plagued by a couple of things. And before the TV show aired, I believe Jeff Rice sued them because they didn't have his permission. And Darry McGavin, who plays Carl Kolchak, a reporter, an investigative reporter, took on more work. Then it was put in the quote-unquote graveyard spot and only lasted one season. I think in total is 20 episodes and you might count the TV movies if in some, some some places they broke them up and might have included, included them in uh, some of the DVDs. The show is a little cheeky, spooky, blends enough comedy, and I thoroughly love the show. I do feel gypped that when I got older and grew to appreciate the show more, looking back, I was surprised there was so little shows. It was only one season. In my, in my memory, it felt like there was lots of them. And the show tackles some incredible uh, variations on creatures and myths. We're talking about vampires, zombies, werewolves, even science fiction, uh, extraterrestrials. And he stumbles through these cases and he'll... The evidence will be destroyed and things like that that um, give the show its charm. The show had some great people working on it. Sometimes their first, like Robert Zemeckis from Back to the Future, Remaining the Stone. I think his first writing credit is from this show. And then there are people, um, it was a guy who did The Sopranos, David Chase, got his first gigs on this show. I'm not sure what his position was. In any case, with the supernatural, the spookiness of it, I fell in love with it. I was surprised looking back on it and re-watching it, how well it held up for me. I'm not, not going to say everybody will um, find it as a uh, good these days but I could see the appeal in it and I try to balance the fanboy entertainment and the critic but I think it holds up I had so much joy from the show maybe that is a bias to some extent 
I've tried to pick up the VHS tapes and the DVDs when they came out at the time. And like I said, when you're watching the show and you got a good actor, Darren McAvin plays Carl Kochek. And what was the, uh, his editor, I think is Simon Oakland. A great cast. He plays the editor, high blood pressure and indigestion problems. Always screaming his name. I thought it really blended everything I loved into one. And looking back again, I'm so surprised it's only 20 episodes. It, it blows my mind sometimes. Looking at the episodes themselves, maybe I'll do a breakdown into each one. And maybe look for the TV movies that were... I don't know how they're packaged now. I'd have to look or if they're on my DVD collection. I can see myself doing individual ones if anybody's interested. To get the gist of it, you got this investigative reporter. He runs around with a, um, like a portable tape recorder and narrates into it. And it adds a nuance to the show I love. And he has a camera too. Yeah, he's like a camera around his neck. He's got the hat. And even though it's a time base where you could look back and you could notice all the cars are different. And since it's made in 74 or 75, the uh, TV show. It feels like a, it was done so well that it blends in now. Yeah, you'll consider it something that happened in the 70s maybe. I don't know if he went on to do a lot of things, but they did use Darren McAvin, the actor who plays Carl Kolchak, in The X-Files. And the creators of that show say The X-Files drew heavily from inspiration from the show and were influenced by The Night Stalker. And X-Files is one of my favorite shows. Unlike Kolchak, I can't really put it in the brackets of the best shows ever, although it means a lot to me and I love it. X-Files is another story. You got 10 seasons, two, three movies. So I would give it to, in a different criteria. At the time, growing up, and it went off the air real quick, but in 1979, CBS took it over. I think it's CBS Late Night. And it did really well. I think this is the time I caught on to the show. I would have been eight, nine, I would have been nine, eight or nine years old. And these are the, this is the time I started remembering st uh, shows like The Six Million Dollar Man and um, Battlestar Galactica. But it just gives me such joy to watch. It's fun. It doesn't get too, too dark. And some of the, um, Plots are actually pretty good. You, you got um, different folklore, myths, they, different cultures, and it, it, it's a real good element to the, to the show. You have um, shows on spirits, uh, witches, Native American legends. Um, I think a, a guy, a prehistoric man, they bring back to life and it's got a creepy feel um serial killers but never goes too dark and maybe that's a con for some people that's fine i just think everybody should give it a shot it's got such good acting good film cinematography and the soundtrack uh i think it's robert colbert did the music and it works so well with his narration and the way it opens up every every episode and it freezes on his face or well, at least in the cuts I've seen and when it aired when I remember or I think my one of my DVD uh, DVDs of the show that's how it starts every show so everything works for me I think it holds up it's fun a little cheeky, like I said, it won't get too dark. 
but I'm surprised at some of the things they tackled. It, it has a really good, interesting twist on things, uh, like Jack the Ripper. I think there's um, also a Helen of Troy episode, and I think she has like immortality, and it deals with aging. A uh, motorcycle rider with a with no head. <laughs> Is this excellent? Campy? Not too campy though. Subtle humor in it. Maybe a little too much for people. But I can't talk enough about the show. I try to get all my friends to watch it. I think I made them watch it. For the most part, they enjoy it. And some of my friends are in the seven year younger bracket i'm surprised how well they like it but that isn't too much of an age gap i'd like to get the comments from people even younger who would check out the show for the first time and wonder how it would impact them especially in this day and age where horror and well no you know buffy was pretty cheeky done well i could see it doing well right now and actually i think it Still airs on certain cable networks. It had a huge cult following, which only grew over years, despite its short-lived TV run. I think it even when it wrapped up, it came out with two more TV movies that they scrapped together. And there's also scripts for, I think it was 26 episodes they had scripted. So there's, I think, six scripts out there. There was a remake or reimagining which didn't do well i think they canceled it on the fourth episode and it was given a six episode run i would have watched it i remember watching it i didn't watch it recently and now with this podcast i'm going to go back into cold check and watch it again and then maybe i'll decide if i'm going to do individual episodes it also did a comic book i remember maybe 2000 2001 and i think they've continued in certain stages i think buffy did it, did it too where the show might have ended but they'll do comic runs so kolchak uh, the night soccer has a comic book run also just a in my opinion incredible show part of my childhood something that brings me joy watching the topics and the variations on the myths and monsters that i grew up on I think it's done just great. And it had a pretty good cult following that grew and is a respected one, I hope. I haven't looked into it too much, but over the years I've gone to see what people uh, think of it. And I think the it was 2005 that the new TV series was aired with Stuart Townsend played Call Call Jack. I think there's a scene in that, one of the episodes, one of the four that aired, where they take Darren McGavin, younger, from the 70s show, and digitally put him in to a background scene. I'm going to have to rewatch that to make sure I'm right, or if my memory is playing tricks on me. I'm almost positive it is, because he's wearing his hat and his suit with the camera and tape recorder, but he's in the office of a, some reporting uh, news station I would guess but it was modern and didn't do well uh, I'm not sure if this suffered from the strike also but I don't think so but it might have it was a strike that uh, affected a lot of shows the reimagining of the bionic woman was affected by the strike and I liked that show I had Katie Sackhoff was uh, like revealed to be one of the prototype bionic women I'm gonna, I'll revisit that too, as I love the original shows. The Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman. And I guess that'll be it. Um, I can't recommend the show enough. I Hopefully my bias doesn't interfere with me saying that it's worth revisiting. That it actually holds up. And I'm going to see what version I have. I might have two versions on DVD. Which one includes the most and maybe do a deep dive into separate episodes. Or just talk about the season one and hit on the episodes themselves. 
I guess it all depends on what time and feedback. In any case, go watch Kolchak, The Night Stalker. I believe you'll have fun. You'll enjoy it. It's a romp, a little cheeky, spooky. Nice twist on old characters and myths. Just a real fun time. Until next time, take care, everybody. See you then.